today we continue the series on the doctrine of baptisms and in today's discussion we're going to look at the second of the three baptisms in, uh, that we've identified which is uh, the baptism in water. Um, just as an aside, there are obviously the three baptisms, uh, baptism, baptism into Christ, baptism in water and baptism in the Holy Spirit. Um, all believers are baptized into Christ. They all experience the first baptism. Um, the second and the third baptism, i.e. baptism into water and baptism in the Holy Spirit, are not in any kind of sequence. Um, it's immaterial as to which way the saint uh, follows, which, which baptism the saint incurs after being baptized into Christ. However, as we have mentioned thus far, it is impossible for a saint to be baptized into water or baptized into the Holy Spirit prior to be baptized into Christ. It, uh, the initial baptism into Christ has to take place first. And so in today's discussion around the uh, uh, topic of water baptism, we want to look at specifically two false teachings that uh, pertain to this particular doctrine because um, these two false teachings obviously do hinder Christians in their walk with the Lord when they get exposed to them. Um, and so the passage of Scripture that we'll open up today's discussion with is in Matthew's Gospel, Matthew 28, verse 19. The Scripture says, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So this is the instruction given to us by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. He has uh, instructed his church to go into all of the world and to make disciples of all of the nations and to baptize them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. And so the, one of the main reasons why the church baptizes in water is because it's an instruction given to us by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Now, with regards to uh, this particular baptism in water, um, not all in the church experiences baptism. Now, why is that? It, well, there's two main reasons for it. One is that it, 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 it is ignorance in the church. They're not taught about this particular doctrine, this uh, instruction of the Lord, or they're taught incorrectly. Um, the incorrect teaching would be that water baptism is not really that uh, important and therefore it's not necessary. Saints can ignore it. Um, obviously, saints can't ignore it because it's an instruction given to us by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And as we go through this particular doctrine in the next uh, number of teachings, we will see the importance of water baptism um, and why all saints should in fact be baptized in water. Um, there's a, the second reason why saints do not partake of this particular baptism is because they're taught incorrectly. Now, one of the incorrect teachings that have crept into the church along this line is the teaching of um, baptizing children in water and thus substituting the baptism in water for the believer once they're born again. Um, that baptism is sprinkling water on the heads of infants. And that particular doctrine has crept into the church. It's a false doctrine. It's a man-made practice that is completely contrary to what Scripture teaches. Now, this is not something that's new that's come into the church because our Lord Jesus had exactly the same problem when he was on the earth. And we pick it up in uh, Mark's Gospel, Mark chapter 7, verse 8 and 9. This is the Lord Jesus speaking. He said, For laying aside the commandment of God, you hold the tradition of men, the washing of pitchers and cups and many other such things you do. Uh, he said to them, All too well you reject the commandment of God that you may keep your tradition. And so our Lord Jesus encountered the same thing when he was on the earth, in that the Pharisees and the uh, religious lead leaders of his day 
had implemented a whole lot of traditions of men and thus had rejected the commandment of God. Now Jesus said that that's what you guys do. You reject the commandment of God that they may keep their tradition. And so what you find in the church today is that there are whole denominations uh, who reject the commandment of God in the area of water baptism. Why? Because they prefer to hold on to their traditions. What are their traditions? Well, their traditions are the sprinkling of water on the heads of little infants. And that, they declare, is in fact water baptism, thus replacing the commandment of God that all believers, those who are born again, must be baptized in water. And so you can see how the, the problem that Jesus came against in his day still is prevalent in the church today. And there are certain denominations that would um, really oppose any um, teaching that would say to them, but wait a minute, you know, the Bible actually teaches that it is only those who are born again who in fact can be baptized in water. Uh, because they've had this tradition in their church, it's been in their church for many hundreds of years, and they will fight tooth and nail to keep that tradition in place, and thus they will reject the commandment of God. So that is one of the reasons why uh, believers aren't baptized in water, is because firstly they're not taught about it in its entirety, and so they're completely ignorant on the subject, or they're uh, receive false teaching along that line, i.e. Uh, replacing a water baptism with sprinkling on the heads of infants. But then there's an, another false teaching around a water baptism which we also encounter in the church. And the passage of scripture that we'll use to uh, bring about that discussion today is in Romans chapter 10, verse 8 to 210. Um, this is the Apostle Paul writing, he says, But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And so why are we discussing this particular passage of Scripture in relation to uh, water baptism? Well, the reason that we bring it up is because there are, again, factions within the church that would try and teach the church that unless one is baptized in water, they cannot be saved. Um, and so you have the, the, this is at the other extreme. The first extreme we taught was the fact that you know, people reject water baptism because they say they've already been sprinkled when they were infants, and so they don't have to be baptized in water. Now we get to the other end of the spectrum, and this um, uh, faction teaches the church that it is vital uh, for an individual in order to uh, be saved, they must be baptized in water. So their teaching goes to the extreme that says, unless you have been baptized in water, you cannot be saved. Um, now, this particular uh, doctrine, uh, false doctrine, is the more dangerous of the two because it adds a further requirement in order for one to be saved. Now, any requirement that is added on is complete heresy and should be rejected in its entirety. The Apostle Paul is very plain to us that in order for one to be saved, there's only two requirements that need to be met. The one is that we have to believe in our hearts that God has raised Christ Jesus from the dead. And the second is we have to confess Him as Lord. Meeting those two requirements is all that is required for an individual to be born again, i.e. baptized into Christ. And therefore, they are a part of Christ, they put on Christ, they are now saved. Being baptized in water is a subsequent experience to salvation. It is not a part of salvation. And so it's very important for us to make that distinction because, as I say, there um, are factions within the church, um, some very powerful, that are, are very adamant about the fact that unless you're 
are also baptized in water. You have to confess. They believe, yes, you must believe Jesus has been raised from the dead. You must confess him as your Lord. But you must also be baptized in water. And unless you are baptized in water, you cannot be saved. Now again, this is not something new in the church. Uh, the apostles had e experienced the same problem when they were on the earth. And the passage of scripture that we'll have a look at to highlight that truth is in Acts chapter 15, verse 1 uh, to 24. The scripture says, And certain men came down from Judea and taught the brethren, Unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. Verse 24. Since we have heard that some who went out from us have troubled you with words unsettling your souls, saying, You must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment. And so what we have revealed to us in this passage is that in the early church, um, Jewish, um, they weren't converts because these were uh, uh, Jews who pretended to be converts. But what they were doing is they were going around the churches after the apostles had, had started churches, uh, particularly the apostle Paul, by the way, they would go and go into those churches and they would say, yes, it's quite right that what Paul has taught you, you have to believe that Jesus has been raised from the dead, you have to confess him as Lord, but in order for you to be saved, you have to go this one further step, which is you must be circumcised um, and you must keep the laws of Moses. And so it was creating confusion in the church because Paul never taught that. Um, and so now you get these other Jews that are coming in and say, you need to follow these steps as well, otherwise you will not be saved. In other words, they were adding on a further requirement to salvation. The apostles got to hear about it, and they came together, they had this whole big conference, and they made the decision that it was, in fact, false doctrine that was being taught to the church. What the Jews were, in fact, teaching the Gentile believers is that they had to convert to Judaism in order to be saved, which was obviously not the gospel at all. They went out into the church and they rectified the false doctrine that was being proclaimed. Um, and so we can see that this is not something new in the church, that there are always going to be individuals that will go into the church and try and introduce false doctrine in order to confuse the saints and in order to get them to draw away from following after Christ. And so that same principle uh, is brought into uh, about with those individuals who would take the doctrine of water baptism and tie it to salvation. Water baptism has absolutely nothing to do with the salvation of an individual. We are saved uh, prior to being baptized in water. We're baptized into Christ and thus we are born again before we ever encounter being baptized in water. The two are not linked together. Water baptism is important, but it's important for this life only. It has absolutely no bearing on eternity. Uh, examples, we can look at all of the Old Testament saints are in heaven today. Not one of them were baptized in water. It was not a requirement. You just had to believe in the Old Testament. Um, think about that uh, young criminal, or maybe he wasn't that young, uh, on, the, on the cross next to our Lord Jesus. Um, he was born again on the cross. And our Lord said to him, This day you will be with me in paradise. No water baptism incurred there. And so the doctrine of the fact that you must be baptized in water in order to be saved is a false doctrine and it's one that should be rejected in its entirety. Um, and that's where we're going to end the teaching on today and the next teaching will continue with this doctrine of being baptized in water. We're going to end the teaching today in that point. Amen.